I'm Bruce Monday. For the past 12 months I've been uh, the acting presiding member of the Native Vegetation Council, but my actual role is as the Minister's independent representative on the Council. Uh, my background is essentially one uh, as a part-time grazier. I've been in South Australia grazing cattle for 40 years, but also I have a professional background in science and agriculture. Well, the history of the Native Vegetation Act is interesting because it really brought forward the widespread feeling amongst the community that widespread clearance of native vegetation in South Australia had perhaps gone too far and certainly needed to be arrested and in some instances the quality of the native vegetation needed to be restored. So that was the fundamental requirement of the Parliament, was that widespread clearance of native vegetation in South Australia should cease henceforth. The Act has been very successful. You know, widespread clearance, legal widespread clearance, doesn't happen much now and it's accepted by the wider community and so there's really been a great cultural change in terms of attitude. And I think the next step forward will be the next cultural change where we're not just glad that we've stopped clearance but rather we're proud of the fact that we've reinstated some of this native vegetation and we've looked after it and we've actually enhanced it. And this becomes something which is just not questioned, not even thought twice about. It's just understood that that's the responsible way that we want to, that we want to live. And why would you want to do that? Well, you only have to look around an environment like this and you can't help but be caught up in the magic of it. And even the, at a smaller scale, you lift up a piece of bark and you see a child look underneath a piece of bark and sees another little, little civilization living in there, all these little insects and so forth crawling around there. And if you watch the way children respond to native vegetation, bush, which has not been tamed, you can't help but be caught up in the magic of it and just how wonderful it is. So it's what our children want uh, and it's what we should be setting aside for our children. The council has a role in advising the minister on the condition of native vegetation, how it can be sustained or improved, and it does that by drawing on the experience of a wide range of people. It has nominees put forward by, for example, local government association, which of course is responsible for a large amount of native vegetation in the state. Primary producers SA, because farmers of course are uh, working in amongst native vegetation all the time. Conservation Council of South Australia, who of course are the uh, experts in knowledge of uh, ecosystems, biodiversity and so forth. Planning and the management of native vegetation go hand in hand, so it is important that the Council has access to expertise in that area as well, and that will be a position on the new Native Vegetation Council. Uh, my name is Emmy Borthwick. I represent Primary Producers SA, and I have been a Native Vegetation Council member for two years. I am a farmer producing sheep and, and wool on the Eyre Peninsula. I believe primary producers are responsible for the care and management of the majority of our native vegetation outside of parks and reserves and this should be encouraged, acknowledged and supported through the Native Vegetation Council and resource management. The agricultural community has long recognised the benefits of natural resource management and native vegetation, providing wind breaks, soil salinity prevention and treatment, pest control and carbon sink. My name's Morris Roach. I'm uh, the nominee of the Conservation Council of South Australia and I've been on the Native Veg Council now for four years. Well, we're here in uh, Ferguson Conservation Park in Stonyfell. It's a, a little park, remnant vegetation from uh, the Adelaide Plains primarily, the um, blue gum and red gum uh, and colitis mixed woodland. Um, there's 150 native species here and 105 weed species. So it's quite a degraded park, but uh, you can hear from all the lorikeets and sounds around us that it's still functional at some level ecologically. And uh, it's important that uh, these places are kept. 
uh, and um, restored to health if possible. And the Native Vegetation Act protects all of these places, uh, remnants wherever they might be in South Australia. My interest is in uh, biodiversity conservation, so I see uh, I can contribute to that in my role on the Native Vegetation Council. I'm Penny Payton. I've uh, been on the Native Vegetation Council for nearly eight years, which is four terms, and as well as being a council member, I'm on the um, Grants Committee, uh, and I'm a nominee of the Na Natural Resources Management Council. Personally, I've been interested in the natural world and conserving it for most of my life. Um, and apart from my family, it's my greatest passion, really, the, um, the biological and natural world around us. And I feel that um, it offers um, a great deal to my sense of well-being, uh, being actually out in the natural world and working to conserve it. On a more global perspective, um, I think that the last five years have seen um, a lack of interest both from the general community and from government in, in nature conservation and, and biological um, diversity conservation. And even though we talk about the triple bottom line and the fact that you know economic, social and environmental all have equal weighting, when it comes to decision making, I think that definitely the economics is all, always wins out and there might be some lip service paid to the other two when it doesn't interfere with the economic well-being of the project. So, um, once again, I think the Native Vegetation Council and the Act play a very important role in helping to, I guess, redress that, that imbalance that I see occurring. Kim McHugh, um, I represent local government on the Native Veg Council and have done for about three terms. Being a third generation farmer, um, I think I bring to the council um, experience in agriculture as well as local government and, and what I'm seeing more of is farmers protecting and valuing their native vegetation. We've got farmers and we do it ourselves fencing off native vegetation, creating wildlife corridors, um, planting trees. Um, we've got all these great trees making oxygen every day, um, locking away carbon my interest to become involved um, when the opportunity arose was to try and help the relationship between local government and the Native Vegetation Council. I've had problems with preconceived thoughts that farmers don't look after their native vegetation mm -hmm. and through my experience farmers are very proud to protect it. Mm -hmm. I think one of the key things is that it's not a case of conservation or development. The two can go hand in hand and that I think is absolutely fundamental. The Native Vegetation Act was not set up to impede development but rather it was to ensure that development was responsible and did not cause a degradation, an overall degradation of native vegetation. Now in some instances it becomes essential that native vegetation is cleared. For example bushfire safety, road safety, uh, farming development and so forth. And all those things often require the clearance of native vegetation. What is important is that the amount of vegetation which is cleared is minimised as far as practical and the impact of that clearance is also minimised. But at the same time there needs to be an offset which compensates for the clearance. And so that's a key role for the council to determine how you can minimise the impact of the clearance and at the same time enhance the offset so that in the end Development proceeds, but at the same time, the quality, the overall quality and quantity of native vegetation in the state is enhanced. And those two things are not incompatible. A highlight for me being on the council was a recent regional tour the council made, where we met a group of neighbours who had uh, collaborated in um, hiring an ecologist, um, purchasing some equipment, and looking after the native vegetation on their properties, which was a large contiguous patch of high value vegetation. I was very proud that the, uh, the council could facilitate these inspirational people in their activities. So in, in terms of the highlights of being on the council for quite a long period of time, eight years, um, has been 
the strong emphasis the council has, has um, put on our relationship management. So when I came to council, I think the Native Education Council had a pretty poor um, reputation in, the, in some of the, the sort of stakeholder groups that we interact with um, on an almost daily basis. And the council has really worked very hard to develop those relationships and to try and see our act and, and our policies from their perspective rather than just from our perspective. One of the most important has been our regional visits. So throughout the last four or five years, we've attempted to get out into regions um, at least twice a year for a couple of days so that we um, meet with as many people in those regions and listen to them and then take back their issues uh, and try and work out how we can better meet their needs. And one example of that would be um, the native vegetation sorry, the roadside vegetation uh, management guidelines. So some of the um, smaller uh, regional councils with, with not so many resources as some of the larger councils have really struggled to develop those um, vegetation plans. So we've um, developed templates for, for such councils and for all councils, uh, which have three levels. So there's a, a simpler level, a more um, a complicated and then a much more in-depth level and you can start at any level and build on that over time. Because in some areas of the state very little vegetation exists except on roadsides so it's really important to conserve those areas. I, I think what I'm proud of and the, the whole council obviously should be as well was to have a better consultation process with local government and other stakeholders who've got a real interest in vegetation management. So. Um, I, th I think through the SEB review, we did really build some good uh, communication between the stakeholders. I think one of the great achievements of the Council over the last several years has been the working relationship it has had with the Department of Planning, Transport and Infrastructure in terms of uh, enabling clearance where there is a road safety issue but at the same time achieving the best possible maintenance of native vegetation. And the, the two organisations, the Department and the Native Veg Council, have worked very constructively together to understand each other's uh, circumstances. Clearance is now done with a view to minimising the impact on the native vegetation, but at the same time achieving safe, out safe outcomes for road users. The highlight of being on the Native Vegetation Council has been giving the primary producers of the state a strong and clear voice. My message to listeners would be that uh, native vegetation is really important um, and, and we need to look after it and protect it. And we, we don't need to see it um, as a burden, we need to see it as an asset and it's an asset to our properties it adds value to our properties to have nice native vegetation. It's also a great asset when it comes to um, shelter belts for cattle, when it comes to windbreaks for crops, when it comes to windbreaks and buffer zones for agricultural pursuits such as spraying and uh, other noisy uh, issues that we have in agriculture. It's a great haven for our native um, animals, um, our birds, and also for our native bees and insects that are so important to pollinating our crops. We need to understand that native vegetation is always under pressure. Even if you just walked away and left it on its own, it wouldn't necessarily stay pristine. It's invaded, for example, by weeds, feral animals and so forth, and also people who go in there uh, inappropriately and damage it. So even the most pristine native vegetation still needs to be managed. It's a lot easier to look after intact native vegetation and maintain it at that state than it is to take degraded native vegetation and try and restore it. So if you've got something which is good, the first imperative should be look after it. We need to be constantly aware of the, the threat which is imposed from without, that is the native vegetation is impacted by climate. It'll be a gradual change and if we're not careful it's one of those things that could creep up behind us and take us by surprise.
what the native vegetation will look like here in a hundred years time is very hard to predict but nonetheless we do need to be um, keeping a dialogue with uh, climate scientists who can give us um, the best indication of what's going to happen to native vegetation. We need to be very careful that the projects that we are funding are consistent with the predictions of climate change so that we're not putting uh, investment into areas which are doomed but rather into areas which are prospective. As with almost any system, if it's got many, many components, then it does have the capacity to respond to threats. But if you start removing those components, allow them to degrade, then the whole system becomes far more vulnerable. We forget with all that technological wizardry that um, we are biological entities. South Australians see the land as a clean slate um, without any ecological or cultural context. Um, we need to remember that we are uh, animals in biological systems, uh, ecological systems that need to be healthy for our continued existence. So one message I'd like to take back to uh, listeners out there is that we are a very small group of ordinary people um, who come from very different backgrounds but we obviously uh, are on the Native Vegetation Council to uphold the objects of the Native Vegetation Act. But within those constraints, I think we bend over backwards to um, try and facilitate um, the wishes of the people who come to us who are wishing to either clear native vegetation or in some way modify native vegetation because of, um, of, of, their, own, of their own wishes and, um, and, and ends. And we're not there to be a barrier to um, development, to people making their livelihood. Um, we are really there to facilitate their needs, but also, as I say, to, to meet the objects of the Act. I am proud that there is a better relationship now between local government and the Native Veg Council. Still some work to be done, of course, um, as we have new people come onto the Council and new people come into local government. But uh, my advice for my successor on the Native Veg Council would be to come on with an open mind and a real willingness to work with the other members and the native veg uh, unit um, to further enhance our native vegetation. My message for future representatives on the Native Vegetation Council, if you have passion, experience, knowledge and communication skills, I would like to encourage my replacement to be confident that you can represent and contribute to the state's strategic directions. Everyone can be involved through community consultations or positions on boards, councils or committees to ensure a sustainable future for our state's native vegetation.